And we are back. Uh, Nimmer and Deer returning for some more uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Um, I'll be honest, it's been a while. I've had a bit of uh, life happen, so I haven't been hanging you know, out playing my games quite as much as I'd like. But uh, we are back in the market square, and oddly enough, this whole YouTube channel thing has been kind of a boon in that sense, because we I could go back and look war. at the video I had recorded and actually make sure I knew what was going on. Um, although I hit the wrong button, so having to, um, having to relearn the commands, it's been that long. All right. So I need to toggle things back, because in our last episode, we... Uh, kind of cheesed the system a bit and killed some centipedes that you can see their weirdly now greenish bodies on the other side of that uh, little area that we could access via a tree bridge. Or we can move up in this direction to the northeast where we had just had a surprisingly taxing battle with some relatively low-level enemies. They, you know, they hit us. Uh, we had a, a demon that was able to unload a, a an area effect a, attack on us, which depleted the healing resources pretty hard, I'm not going to lie. But we've got some other stuff to explore over here. So I think we're going to go this Lead way. On. As everybody snaps back to Sela because she's my party leader. So in case you didn't look, yeah. Hey, I like how the evoker's body came back. If you go back and watch the previous video, yeah. Um, Hellwig the Barbarian, like blasted him all the way over there. So, I like the thing. That's why we have the loot bag There's instead no of just trouble. his body being searchable. Gotta admit, I'm still kind of scared about this because we know there is a, na a rather nasty demon somewhere up here. And that's concerning. Okay, uh, well, all right. Pick the lock for us, Camellia. I hope you appreciate this. Oh, I totally appreciate it. Let's see what all we got here. Hor horseshoes. How could we? How could we turn down a horseshoe? Um, a short sword. And some money and a couple of random weapons. Is that right? You're gonna tell me what this is? Yeah, regular old crossbow. Um, I'm half tempted to take it just to take the like get the marker off my screen, but eh, it's not worth it. Into the house. So we have a house we can investigate, or we can. Move a bit further on into the corner. Uh, let's check out the house first. That seems seems reasonable. We'll check out the house. But before we check out the house, we quick save. Because I don't trust this game. It's old school sensibilities. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll go in there and there'll be like five trolls on the other side of the, of the door. Somehow. Five trolls shouldn't even be able to fit in this building. But... Well, we have a a book to loot I found and a something. and a trap. Okay, um, that's good. So, uh, okay, Camellia, um, I would like for you to unlink I from everybody the else. Of the spirits. And oh, geez, the tra oh, that's not good. The trap. There's a trap right there, and it. Links the back. Guide me. Let's see what do we have here? Looks like some food. Oh, purifying solution, so we can heal. You know, some moss. Why do we have mutated fish? Why do we have mutated fish in the middle of a city? Okay, so now here's the real concern. So the trap icon is telling me that the means for disabling the trap are further forward. But my party is all in here and that's this is the kind of thing that yeah so let's let's, let's link camellia back up because instead me. of going through going and activating the trap or trying to deactivate the trap with just camellia we're going to take the whole team oh god Rely that, on ai me. don't don't do it on my way huh the hell we glitched out a bit there we have a dead body um huh okay So we have a pipe, spoon, crooked paws. Okay, yeah, we'll just we'll just collect all of that. That's fine. Disarm with trickery. Okay. I am helpful, am I not? You are helpful, Camellia. Thanks. Why was this thing trapped? It's like a book. 
Why was there a trap over top of a book? Oh, there was a chest there, too. Okay. That makes sense. It's not a book. It's a journal about an experiment. Day what? Here, let me expand it a bit. Day one. Today I was able to catch a closet. Aurora and be my witness. It wasn't easy, considering my humble physical condition. Luckily, it was a scrawny specimen, about seven pounds, with a wingspan of about two and one-third feet. When it awoke, the closet first tried to attack me, and then ruined my clothes with his caustic saliva. Okay. Experiment day three. I have begun my linguistic research. My goal is to study the language of closets. You know, abyssal. Oh, okay, well, then I guess the next line straightens that out. I'm quite convinced they have their own dialect. Through understanding their speech, I will be able to understand their way of thinking and convince them to rebel against their lord's tyranny. Yeah, let me know how that works out for you. A revolution will roll through the abyss, and the powerless will rebel against their oppressors. I'm sure that Everbloom Milani will not refuse her patronage even to such creatures as these if they would break their chains of slavery. Unfortunately, progress is thus far insignificant. I've been able to catalog only two words, which I suspect must mean rend and carrion. The closet formed both words quite vividly when commenting on my person. While I was entering this record, the closet managed to steal my watch and throw it into the chamber pot. Judging by his spiteful giggling, he's quite delighted about his little joke. Okay, yeah, that's, that sounds very closet. And despite the naughty trick, I am somewhat glad. Jokes and pranks are part of cognitive communication, which I fully intend to establish with the specimen. I grow more and more convinced that I made the right decision in leaving Absalom and Foray Logos, the so-called wise house. Yeah, that's a library and you know, in the city of Absalom, which is like the most kind of like politically and, you know, finan like economically important city in the entire, this entire part of the world. So uh, anyway, more like narrow-minded fools stuck in the past under the sway of their ringleader, that chatterbox, the fool of fools, Jubilost Narthropple. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's a gnome. Jubilost must be a gnome. I'm not, I don't recognize the name immediately. They've never appreciated the progressive nature of my theories. Day four. Today, the closet almost bit my nose off while I fed him. In response to my shame, I beat him with a wand. Lucky he didn't break a wand. A wand is like a little stick. Eh. Such behavior towards a sentient. Uh, I think they mean sapient. Like, lobsters are sentient, right? So, anyway. So such behavior toward a sentient being is unacceptable, and I repent deeply. I've also run out of meat. The specimen and I will have to make do with porridge and soup. Day six. <laughs> it's been three days since the specimen switched to a vegetarian diet. At first, the closet refused to eat plant-based food, but then ate some cabbage soup and poked at the porridge with his claw. His face looked so tragic. Day seven. The specimen has completely lost all signs of aggression. At dawn, I was awoken by his moaning. The closet was rolled up in a ball in the corner, whimpering. Despite his dangerous appearance, it's quite impossible not to feel compassion toward the poor creature. I had to take prompt measures and give the specimen a laxative potion. Uh, okay. I'm guessing the closet the closet got constipated from the from switching to a vegan diet. Okay. The closet now reacts to me with confusion and fear, but at least it's not suffering anymore. His gastrointestinal tract must have reacted unhappily to the unfamiliar diet. Oops. Day ten. What a great day! The switch to a completely plant-based diet is complete. The theory that quasits can only eat meat and carrion has been disproven. My eternal opponent, Sir Jubilost, will just have to go drown himself in a river. It's a little... that's some weird exultation, but sure. The closet has become peaceful and easygoing. He no longer tries to eat my boots, or the feet inside them. The specimen's behavior has become gentle and friendly. He shows some interest in ball games and physical exercise. I have named him Pecker. Great. Today he initiated communication and attempted to explain a new word to me. By all evidence, he was making up the word during the communication process, for there's never been such a word in the closet language. <sighs> You've the me marched me to the bones today. The meaning, as I understand it, is safety, comfort, and calm. Thanks for disturbing me there, Wolja. I see no further need to keep Pecker on his chain. This experiment has convinced me that the vicious and evil traits attributed to closets are acquired habits, not natural or inherent to their nature. Over these days, I really have grown fond of him. And by all evidence, Pecker likes me too. He's gotten used to napping on my knee while I'm writing my observations in my journal. Maybe someday this closet will become my familiar. Yeah, that's, that's going to end well. 
The current stage of the experiment is complete. Pecker and I are soon off to Absalom to present our findings before the professors at Foray Logos and become a scientific sensation. On our way, we may make a small detour to Avistan, uh, so that Pecker will have a chance to better adapt to civilization. I hope the little trickster enjoys the journey. Wait, you're a scholar? So Avistan, for what it's worth, is like a continent. It's the continent that we're on at the moment. This, this house sits on Avistan, so... I don't, yeah, I'm not, I don't trust this guy. I don't think he knows what's going on. But, um, but we'll take his journal. Wow, lots of books here. Stories told us by spirits. The Knight with Harrowed Hands. Canabras Medium Alliance Publishing. I particularly like the, uh, uh, stuff here. So, uh, That's, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to read this text out loud. I've got this weird feeling that if I do, something strange is going to happen. So I'm just, you know, um, I, I, I'm reading it myself. Um, I'll leave it on here where you can, you know, see it. But, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, this is pretty gross, so for what it's worth, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a weird thing. Sorry for the silence, but, um... Okay. I'll take the book. I don't know. Hey, look! A scroll of protection from chaos. Alright. Some gold coins. Alright. Fantastic. Wait. Did you say Sela can't use protection from chaos? That feels weird. I'll see what I can do. Well, paladins could use scrolls of protection from alignment. Oh, well. To the basement. Oh, this should be fun. Uh, yeah, well, before we go into the basement, quick save again. Because I don't feel like having to, like, re-disarm that trap if it turns out this, you know, goes completely sideways and we end up in, um, in an, end up in an encounter here. But... I got magical sparkly sounds. That was Lead the on. thing. Oh! Hey, look! How'd that closet thing work out for you there, friend? Scroll of Fairy Fire and Sea Invisibility. Ooh, Sea Invisibility could be useful. I'll have to take a look and remember if I've it got anybody no who can cast I think Ember can cast it, but... Clear the blockage. Alright. Sure. There's something over on the other side. Okay. Save the last one for me. Uh, so Sela took a buttload of cold damage. H hang on, who took the cold damage? Hang on, what? Here, what's the combat log here? We've got some dretches somewhere. Um. So, a shadow demon. Uh oh. Okay. Shadow demons are 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 bad. What? Also, shadow demons are usually invisible. I don't like that. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't like it so much that I'm gonna do some, you know, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna do some finagling here. So here, we're gonna reload. No Because we got a scroll pause. of sea invisibility. All right, let's see how this works out. I'm still working on where the dretches were. I'm get are they on the other side of that blockage? What what? Was there like a passage I failed to perceive or something? I'm not a hundred percent sure. That was very strange. Um My apologies for the the, the <laughs> then this is the quick load. Imagine if I 
I mean, I know quick load really only means that, you know, I don't have to go back to the screen because it just reloads the last quick save I made, but... But it does seem sort of funny when you get this, you know, awkward, like, why is the game pausing at, you know, 70% of the load? What, what What's happening there? I, I have no idea. All right. So... So if we go into the basement... I took some cold damage from that blockage, but I couldn't quite tell who took the cold damage. There's two different scrolls that let me see something that's invisible, right? So, uh, so the question is the following it is here. No trouble. I will help Pause I while I, you know, dinker around with my inventory. So, I think Ember should be... For all I know, Hellwig may be able to cast Sea Invisibility. That would be interesting. Um, let's see here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Oops, I'm in the wrong screen. It's been too long. I can't remember how this works. Equipment. Here we go. I need to go into my uh, quick save list. I don't think I need to keep that. I, I keep, I've kept Terendalev's scale on me for ages, but I don't know if it's strictly necessary. Oh, good, good, good gracious. I have like a billion scrolls. Um, I want to know, can, do I have anybody who could cast Fairy Fire? That's kind of interesting. Who else might? Ember, maybe? Yeah, no. Hmm. All right. Debating what I'd want to put into that spot. So let's. Eh. Heroism seems appropriate. There we go. Yeah, you can carry the scroll of heroism. All right. Oh, I'm already carrying a scroll of heroism. Okay, a second one is probably not necessary. We'll give you a scroll of enlarged person if we need to go beefing Hellwig. Um, All right. So. Whoops. <laughs> I'm not down on the the bar here. So. Scroll of Sea Invisibility. Now the problem is... What is this gonna do? I'm really curious here. Oh! I have encountered the enemy Shadow Demon. Oh, oh goody. He was back here, apparently. The enemy is corporeal, it receives no damage from non-magical weapons. Yeah, so incorporeal creatures really suck. Weirdly enough, I'm getting this tutorial. Did I get this with the shadow? I, I legit can't remember. Um, ghost touch weapons deal them full damage, non-magical weapons deal no damage at all. Great. Yep. Alright. Wolgif, um... Alright. So we gotta see if I can make this work. So I'm kinda curious. This could get dicey. Um... So does it have? Okay, well, we made a couple of religion checks, which is handy, so I guess I can look at this thing. Uh, sure, why not? Where's... What's my button to... I'm trying to remember what the button is for actually, like, inspecting something, is it? I hit down when I'm over them, okay. So 60 hit points, level 7 outsider. He has permanent invisibility. DR, you know, that's only circumvented by good or cold iron. Whoops. Doggone it. Okay. He's immune. Yeah, incorporeal creatures are not, not, they're not fun. Um, yes, yeah, spell resistance. Okay, so, ugh. Yeah, this is, this isn't going to be good, so... Uh, I'm a little curious. So he can cast fear, he can do shadowy stuff. I'm hoping... I've, I've, I've actually got a plan for this. So the plan is going to be a little cheesy, because technically this dude is way above my pay grade. I have, like, no business messing with this thing. But, uh... Oh! It's a surprise round? Okay. Um, Awesome. That's, I guess, handy. Okay. I just now noticed it's a surprise round. All right. K 
Okay, Camellia. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Camellia, can you see him? I've got an idea here, and it's important. I'll cut you wide open. Yeah, he made his save. Oh, well, the misfortune would have been useful. I mean, he doesn't need, you know, much to deal with, to get out of it, but anyway. So, uh, Ember, here's where the plan comes in. Okay. Because he's not immune to getting put to sleep. Looking through the immunities, sleep was not one of his immunities. I honestly think this is my only shot, and if I fail it, I'm probably just going to reload. If he makes his save. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this is going to be painful, because the game has not given me much by way of magical weapons. So, yeah, we're just going to reload. This waiting um, bores me. Yeah, the waiting bores me, too. But... Although at least I guess we can, you know, set ourselves up now that I know where the Shadow Demon is. And I'll quick save again on the other side of the... <laughs> I'll quick save again once I've got the scrolls and kind of position my party so we can just get happy on this thing. But... So yeah, my plan, in case you weren't able to gather, is to get this dude put to sleep and then coup de grace him. Because I only have one magical weapon on me. Everyone is mortal in this world. Yeah, they are, Helwig. Yet another obstacle. Still incorporeal. Wolgif still goes first. The Shadow Demon didn't make it into initiative on the surprise round this time. Bye, Wolgif. Um, Ember. Delay. After Sela. Land. Whatever. Oh, I wanted... Oh, Camellia was actually after Sela this time. Oh, well. All right. Demoralized Shadow Demon. This technically isn't vital. It's just like it feels like it could be handy. Um, all right. In Sela's turn, Ember, delay after Camellia. Camellia, try to misfortune the Shadow Demon. Does it work? It did work. He's misfortune, so now he's got like two say. He's got a. <laughs> I've, he's got to roll better than a nine twice. If I'm, you know, if I read the stuff from my previous attempts correctly, slumber the shadow demon. Failed the save. Okay. All right. So, we'll see if this works. So, Ember's gonna enter turn. Wolgif. Where did Hellwig go? Oh, game. I don't get it. Okay, we'll just not moving. Shadow Demon is still asleep. Lan. Um, yeah, you sit there. Sela, you sit there. Hellwig. I need to turn on Blood Rage. I gotta burn around the Blood Rage. So basically, I'm trying to maximize the damage to, um improve my chances of, uh... Got, I got ready to turn it off, and it's like it's... I should go ahead and cut it off, because otherwise it's going to burn another round. After, uh... Wait, did that not... Huh? Okay. I'm, I, I've got a feeling I'm, I'm kind of upset at the moment, because I think... I don't think I'm getting my Blood Rage damage bonus. Um... Where's my... Oh, why did I... Oh, gosh, I put it at the very end. Okay. So now we're doing a coup de grace, power attacking, you know, hopefully blood rage thing on this un, on this helpless shadow demon. And we'll see if it works. He... Oh, he made the save! Dang it! Let's move. You've marched oh well. me to the bones today. Yeah, we're marching you to the bones. Oh, it went like almost completely according to plan. Um, even misfortuned, because I don't think he had his turn in initiative. So I think he was still misfortune. Son of a gun. Huh. <sighs> yeah, getting a sequence of die rolls to. It's weird. I can get a sequence of bad die rolls, like, 
nobody's business, but getting a sequence of rolls to go my way is a lot more challenging. Uh, oh, heavens to Betsy. Yeah, this is definitely going to get, you know, edited a bit here, so... Because, yeah, we're, we're sitting at about 39 minutes, and I've basically just read to you and repeatedly tried to start this one fight over and over and over again. Um. Okay. Cast the spell. Let's see. Blink. They will break against our resolve. I love how Hellwig's never in initiative. And he is this time, I think. Oh, heavens. Okay. Alright, so now, for the record, Hellwig is sitting, like, in front of the Shadow Demon, it looks like. I'm One of these days I'll figure out why he never acts in surprise rounds. I don't... I want her to go after Camellia. Yeah. I want Sela to attempt to demoralize. Maybe it's, like, maybe it's his action in the surprise round just casting the thing. I don't know. Okay, well, this is not good. He didn't, he didn't fail against the demoralize. So, um, so we'll move Seela closer. This is probably a reload, but he, there's always a 5% chance he rolls a 1, right? Let's see. He actually failed his save against the Misfortune. That's handy. Okay. So Ember, so now is the next piece of the puzzle going to be in place? Is kind of what it comes down to. He failed his slumber save. Okay. So round one. Like I said, yeah, Hellwig is just not an initiative for some reason. Okay, so here's hoping the Shadow Demon doesn't wake up. He didn't wake up. Everybody sit on their haunches. Uh... I don't want to risk doing anything hostile. I actually kind of wish that he, you know. All right. So turn on Blood Rage. Because honestly, if this works, the fight's over. And I've still got my Blood Rage. But. Coup de Gras, the Shadow Demon. Let's do Spells this. Not working like that. Why is it? Oh, okay. I clicked on the ground instead of the Shadow Demon. He nat won the coup de grace. Okay. Everything finally fell my way. Awesome. The shadow demon is dead. I got a whopping 60 experience for that. That seems really trivial for what I just had to do. Um all right. I'm I'm kind of not happy at the moment. That's a little that's a little silly, but whatever. We've uh, managed to finish the battle. This is an excellent place to press pause because I've been going for over 40 minutes now and not an awful lot has happened. I apologize for that, but hey, it's content, right? So uh, we'll be posting another video soon. Once again, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the rest of the videos um, in the Nimrandir Plays Wrath of the Righteous series to see what brought Helwig the Last Warrior and his intrepid band of heroes to try like half a dozen times in this basement to kill a shadow demon. Anyway, we will catch you next time.